I hope you all can see my screen clearly and hear me clearly. Reminding you again that you can respond to me during the lecture by your texts which are available to me. So a very good morning, good morning, or rather, a very good afternoon to all of you. We are going to start with today's class on DIP. Last class we had started with spatial filtering, and we have discussed some aspects of it, especially the intensity transformation or single pixel operations. Today we are going to look at single pixel operations in a bit more detail. We are going to talk about intensity transformations further, piecewise linear transformations, bit plane slicing and lastly I am going to introduce a very important aspect of modern day digital imaging concept and that is histogram. So first things first, piecewise linear transformations. So what is a piecewise linear transformation? So in this it can be a very complex phenomena and it can be dependent on user to user. So as the name suggests it is piecewise linear that means last class we have discussed log transmissions log transformations and gamma transformation and those were non-linear transformations in a sense that the graph was not a straight line it was a curve now here the graph is a straight line it's a linear but it's piecewise linear so there could be some finite breaks in the graph but each part itself should be linear. So that is the whole idea. One we have already learned and that is called as contrast stretching. We will see you again today. Another is intensity level slicing. So you can slice different intensities and use it for your advantage. Third is a bit plane slicing which is a little complex issue. We will have a very very brief introduction to it. So what is the contrast stretching? So last class again we have learnt one of the examples of contrast stretching. Now today we are going to improve that by having some sort of linear contrast stretching. So example is over here I will be explaining with the help of this diagram instead of the description here. So remember if, this, if it's a straight line from here to here then it's a identity transformation. I hope you remember this graph. This is my input axis. This is the output. This is the darker side. This is the brighter side. This is dark to bright. There are L gray level starting from zero ending at L minus 1. Here there are also L gray levels starting from 0, darker side, ending at L minus 1, brighter side. I always cite the example for 8 bit because in the lab you will be working with 8 bit images, each pixel represented by 8 bit. In that case, there will be total 2 power 8, that is 256 gray levels. We have already discussed in the earlier lectures. 256 gray levels which is the value of L the actual values will start from 0 to 256 minus 1 that is 255 so now you can see that if it's a straight line then we have we will have an identity transformation but now what is happening is you can see that there are two breaks introduced in the straight line one is over here and one is over here so R1 S1 Remember R is the entry level or input coordinate 
S1 is the output coordinate. So R1 S1 is the coordinate for the one control point. These are the control points. R2 S2 is the other control points. So now you can divide the entire straight line into three parts. So there's a one straight line from here to here, another one here to here, and third one is here to here. And this is what we mean by piecewise linear. So each part itself is linear, but it's no longer a straight path. It's divided now. So this is what is called as piecewise linear transformations. You can play out with these control points. You can lower it, raise it, and the way you do, you will get the transformation. So one of the example is over here. This is my image over here. And you can see that once this point is lowered a little bit, once this point is raised a little bit, then you will find that this section becomes very steep. And if this section very steep, then the contrast will be very high in this section, which is generally happening in the last image. Now, if R1 is equal to R2, that means if this coordinates x, x, x coordinate of this point, which is R1, is same as this. That means if this comes right on the top, imagine a straight line, vertical straight line, then R2 is this. That is what it means R1 is R equal to R2. And S1 is 0 and S2 is L minus 1. That means you bring this point at the ground and you take this point at the ceiling then it is called a thresholding then everything below that r value will get a zero and everything above that r value will get one so yes this is the contrast stretching and this is the thresholded diagram so you can see that here you are losing the details in thresholding you these details over here in this section are lost so i think we have discussed that in the last class with earlier images so that is a straightforward thing. The second is intensity level slicing, which is a much more uh, detailed part. So all you can do is you can again take the line, the straight line, the transformation function, and you can divide it into small parts and work on each part again, but in a way that you don't break the linearity so for example this is the two ways it is done so you have your straight line can be horizontal so all the pixel values between 0 and a all the input pixel values between 0 and a are having a very low output all input pixel values between b and l minus 1 will again have a very low output but all the values between a and b all the input values between a and b will have a very high output here so this is one of the examples of intensity level slicing which is called slicing in the sense that you are maintaining the same intensity level all throughout but you are raising a small interval of intensities in the somewhere in the middle to a higher level so what it means is that you are creating a slice so you have created you have made two cuts one cut is here other cut is here so this is the one slice where the values are low this is the other slice where the values are high this is the third slice where the values are low again so this is one way to create intensity level slicing another way to create is this example so remember this straight line means identity transformation so you keep majority of the image in the identity transformation but you take one suitable small part of the image and you raise that intensity level so again you slice it but this is different from this here everything is suppressed to a very low value here you don't break the identity otherwise you just raise a small portion so how does it work out let's take an example 
so here is my example i have uh, an image and image of most likely it should be an mri of heart now here what has been done is you are trying to uh, enhance the part or the image of this big artery so all you are doing over from here when you go here you can see that the background is dark in this so what you are doing is you are putting this section at very low so any bright input value will go to a very dark output value so this region remains very dark this region is obviously dark because of this but you pick up the region somewhere of the artery and you raise that portion so artery becomes very clearly visible if you want a little bit of background information then this becomes a helpful so you maintain your original image but you increase the histogram sorry you increase the intensity level again in the region where the arteries values gray values are lying so you raise this part and this becomes dominant again just like here but remember just as other values are suppressed in this image here the background values are not so highly suppressed some part of the background is still visible so that is the advantage then i will come to the more trickier part which is a bit plane slicing uh, listen to me carefully and if you have doubts you can ask me during the class or maybe after the lecture so you know that every pixel is represented by bits so basically how many bits are there that is decided by how many system of bits you are using to represent your image for example if it's a 3 bit system then 3 bits are used to define one uh, pixel if it's a 7 bit 8 bit system then 8 bits are used to decide one pixel so pixels are digital values composed of bits so we have to figure out now remember in an image there are number of pixels and each pixel can have 8 bits now when you are doing bits representation when you have done digital image representation in your or digital number representation in your lower classes undergraduate section then you must have learnt about msb and lsb that is what is the most significant bit and what is the least significant bit so each pixel in that way we will have an most significant bit and the least significant bit and one can now imagine if it's an 8 bit image then one can imagine an image composed of number of planes each plane corresponding to one or each plane corresponding to a particular significance level so for example if i have a pixel of the image then it might have 8 bits so i will write the least significant bits of all the pixels in one plane so my lower plane is the least significant plane because i am writing the least significant bit of all the pixels in the lower plane so if my first pixel is if in an image imagine that this is your image two dimensional image and if a particular pixel is over here then 
it you all its bits are written this way starting from here so i will call them say d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 so these are my eight bits written for a given pixel over here so that is how one pixel will be represented in in its bit depth it has a seven bit depth Similarly, I can go for each pixel. So next pixel is here, and next pixel is here, and next pixel is here, and next pixel is here. Start from zero zero pixel, and if it is an m by n image, then you go to the last pixel, and that will be m by n pixel. So for each pixel, you have eight levels of bits placed. So this is called all these planes are called bit planes. now it would be very interesting to know that not all these planes correspond to the image formation in fact some of the planes correspond to the image formation in a very loose manner for example if it's a predominantly a bright image then most of the bits would be lying in the higher planes because it's a if it's it's a bright image then most of the bits would have higher values and therefore upper planes will be uh, filled up completely while most of the lower planes will be empty if it's a relatively dark image then you will find that most of the lower bit planes are occupied by ones while the higher bit planes are zero so depending on what kind of image you are looking at the that way your bit planes will be occupied so we can check this by an example so i have a dollar bill over here you can see that more or less it's a bright image with except those borders and now if you come and check over here these are the different bit planes of this so this is d0 you can see that d0 primarily contains the border and some of the lines over here but otherwise this plane and this plane and this plane they are normally the blank planes as you go towards the higher planes you will find that more and more bits are occupied by logic 1 wherever this logic 1 it's shown as white and wherever the logic 0 it is shown as 0 so these are the higher bit planes so you can see that your this dollar bill can be split into number of bit planes now if you want to reconstruct the image you will find that maybe last three bit planes combined together are sufficient they will give you sufficient enough reconstruction and therefore these data point planes this plane this plane this plane this plane this plane they are not very useful in a sense that what is normally happening is suppose if you want to compress the image bit planes are mainly used for image compression for example the likes in whatsapp you click a very sharp image and then send it by whatsapp to your friend then ask your friend to download it don't forward it immediately download it or save it in his or her gallery then again resend that image to you by uploading now once you have received this image then you compare that with the original image maybe on your laptop in an image processing software by zooming in and look at how much degradation have occurred so you will find that on the phone screen you might not see any degradation because the screens are small but the moment you take it to a high resolution screen or a large screen and zoom in you will find that a lot of degradation has come in so what normally whatsapp does is the whatsapp compresses the images one of the common algorithms to compress the images bit plane slicing so what happens is that here suppose i 
remove this slice, this slice, this slice and suppose this slice also then I will remove half of the data requirement. Image will become half small. It will be a smaller size image. It is easy to upload. It is easy to trans, uh, send across the channel. It is easy to download. So, and once you reconstruct, maybe on a small screen, you may not be able to see any difference when it is recreated. So you don't have to worry about the resolution unless you are going at a large screen so that is where the bit plane slicing is very important although unfortunately in this course we are not looking at image compression as a topic so that will not come apart from these some small introductions here and there So let's look at now a very important aspect of image formation, modern day digital image formation, uh, histogram. And histogram actually opens the door for what is called as computational imaging. Remember we are now living in an era where the imaging is computational. What does it mean? It means that you take an image the sensor takes an image but a heavy computation goes behind it in order to make the image look in a particular way on the screen or print in a particular way. So histogram is a stepping stone towards computational imaging. So what exactly is a histogram of an image? Let's try to understand that. So Let's say that RK for K value 0 to L minus 1 denote the intensities of an L level digital image. So if you have for example 256 level image then RK represent any of those input values. Remember we have used the same terminology even earlier. So R0 is 0 r0 is the darkest one and rl minus 1 is the brightest one then what is the histogram definition histogram is nothing but histogram of say a kth gray level is nothing but total number of pixels in the image having that kth gray level so n is the total number of pixels n is the number of pixels so look at an image for example I want a histogram for say intensity level 150 out of 0 to 255 then what I can do is I can count in the image how many pixels have the intensity 155 or 150 whatever then you once you get that number that number gives you the histogram for that particular k value so, and then you can go to the next k value so for each input k value you will get a histogram so let's look into this a little bit more detail I have some examples to share with you so I have this image this image is actually a 50 pixel cross 50 pixel image so from here to here it is 50 and from here to here it is 50. So 50 into 50 is 2500 pixel image. Now you can see that one fourth is very bright. Then one fourth is little gray. One fourth is little darker gray. And remaining one fourth is very close to black. So how does the histogram look like? So my histogram plot looks like this. I have my k gray levels plotted on my x axis starting with r0 which will be here which is the black and r255 which is here which will be white. Now I will as I said each box or each block here has same number of pixel and same intensity. You can see that histogram is 
has four spikes of equal height okay forget about this triangle so what does it mean it means that my image if you look at this histogram you will see that the image has four components one two three four and these four components are having remember left is dark right is white or bright so it has a very dark value one fourth one fourth is slightly bright one fourth is more bright and finally one fourth is very very close to white so these are my four values now let's look at the next image and try to understand it slightly better now what we have done is we have kept the three parts of the image same this is same this is same and this is also same so no change in all these three but here i have introduced a gradation so here it has number of bands starting from a, a say a brighter value and going to a darker value and you can also see that the strip over here is brighter than this it is very close to white so this white where does it go in the histogram can you think about it so you can now see the changes changes has come the spike here has gone and in place of spike you have these, these small ones so you can see that in each stripe the number of pixels are less so the height is less if you add all these pixels it you will get back your spike here now where does this white one go so you can see that this white which is brighter than this one has gone to the right side of this large spike which represent this block and as it gets darker as you go towards right in this you can see that you go to the darker section and your spikes are getting I mean, towards left and left until at the end of this you have this intensity so you reach over here and you stop there are no pixels having intensities in this range so it's zero and there is a very gray dark gray pixel zone here which is represented here so you can see that if you have different pixel values you will get different numbers distributed over different places in the histogram in a real image this becomes more complex this function as i said this function is h of r k is equal to n k it's a few spikes over here but in a real large image the image becomes very very or the histogram becomes very different looking so let's try to look at the histograms so this is one example over here i have an image which has bright portions then bright portions here then slightly darker and a huge part of the image is fairly dark so what it does is the histogram gives you the tonal variations in the image okay so for example as i said here it's a dark pixel value and here it's a light pixel value and here is the number of pixels hk is number of or hrk is number of pixels so you can see it has a large number of dark pixels so this area is fairly darkened if you notice fairly occupied and then it has large number of very bright pixels as well so you can see that the brighter side is also fairly occupied but the middle side it has some less only this region and somewhat this region is there so middle side is less occupied this is very bright over here so this will be represented by a spike at right at the end of 255 and some are the dark regions very black here well, here it is there it's here and it's here and that is represented somewhere here 
So you can see that looking at the histogram, you can always guess what kind of image you are getting. So you can say that this image is one part of the image has to be very dark. One part of the image has to be very bright while the medium gray level very little zones of that type and this is that kind of image it is predominantly bright in one region predominantly dark in the other region and somewhere in between here let's check some more images okay but before we check more images there's something called as normalizing the histogram now if you look at the previous image here i'm just plotting the number of pixels now when you plot the number of pixels it becomes little challenging for universal softwares to handle why does it become challenging because the total number of pixels vary from system to system so for example if you have a phone from say 2000 say 10 year old or 5 year old phone 2015 then most of the cameras were 6 megapixels if you get a phone today the most of the cameras will be 16 megapixels so number of pixels have changed dramatically so that means number of pixels here have changed therefore it becomes an issue for the software to handle the images from different cameras and some more reasons as well what we prefer is something called as normalizing the histogram so what does it mean by normalizing the histogram so what it means is we divide the each component of histogram by the total number of pixels in the image so nk is the actual number of pixels and if it is an m cross n image then m into n is the total number of pixels so we divide nk by mn and this gives me a normalized histogram think about it what would be the maximum value of the normalized histogram or this this function maximum value so you Suppose if there are m cross n images, sorry, suppose if there are m cross n pixels and let us say that all these m cross n pixel, m into n pixels are of the same shade. They are the same gray level. So in that case, what will be nk for that gray level? Now since all the pixels have the same gray level nk for that gray level is also m into n isn't it and therefore m into n divided by m into n will give you 1 so the maximum value of this ratio for any gray values histogram is 1 what would be the minimum value so think about it suppose in, a, in an image, a particular gray level does not exist. It could be any. For example, say none of the pixels are white. Entire image is some shade of gray. None of the pixels are white. In that case, that particular NK value will become zero because no pixel has that gray level, has that kth gray level. So NK will be zero and this ratio will become zero so when you normalize the histogram unlike in the previous case where the number of pixels of course minimum here also was zero but maximum could have varied depending on the camera make sensor etc unlike this case in this case the maximum value gets a ceiling of one and minimum value is obviously flowed to zero so it is now between only one and zero so that is what is called normalization it is also 
represent the probability of occurrence of intensity level in an image so suppose if rk happens to have nk times then nk is the kth gray level divided by total number of pixels gives you the probability of occurrence of that gray level in an image and obviously the sum total of all these probability has to be 1 so if you add this so n1 by mn plus n2 by mn plus n3 by mn if you add all these then the numerator becomes mn and mn upon mn will become 1 so that is 1 so let's take some examples quickly to understand things better this is largely look at the histogram this is largely an underexposed image if you look at the histogram background sky is dark and foreground here is very dark and you can see that all these histograms are accumulated all these bars are accumulated towards the left side okay while the right side is completely blank showing you that is an underexposed image except this small shoot over here can you guess what is that shoot so that shoot represents a very bright 255 so what is the brightest part you can see it's sun here and it is a very very small part here so you can see it over here sun is always circular in shape but you will find that this is no longer circular in fact it has a very varied zigzag shape and it is at one point appears that it's melting and falling down can you people think why is it so in fact most of the time when you take a photo this photo i had clicked long back in 2007 around 11 years back in those days cameras camera technology have improved by huge amount in present day but still if you take a sun image most likely chances that you will not get a circular image of the sun so question is why i leave that to you people to figure it out let's go ahead let's take some more example this is a very distinct image you will find that there are various shades of gray and each shade of gray has a peak represented over here so this is a very bright snow capped mountain and you can see that these are the this will go to the brightest side so it will be somewhere here and uh, then this has a large gray section one is this then the other one is this so all these gray can come in this one i think this one and this one will go somewhere here now this gray has to go somewhere darkest gray is this part the darkest gray this part will go in the darkest leftmost side peak next to this this region is in darkness this should be the second peak from the left then vast sky gray must come as the next peak over here since this numbers are great lot of gray here some gray here and it's all middle gray you can say and some gray over here so in the middle there's a huge peak and then as you go towards the brighter section you get this so this is the part you can see that nothing is very bright the probability of finding a pixel at 255 is zero in fact the probability of finding a pixel anywhere beyond 200 is zero in this image all the probabilities are less than mostly 200 this is another image you can see that this image is distinct histogram is distinct typically if there is a lot of foliage over here in an image lot of uh, greenery grass various objects then the histogram always tend to accumulate towards the center 
it has missed very dark regions there are no distinct very dark regions there are very few apart from this person's um, t-shirt and maybe some persons here apart from these very few the brighter section is is missing and this is again a low contrast image nothing is very bright nothing is very dark everything is accumulated in the middle this is an image of our college professors on a picnic click in 2003 hope we will again after corona we will go again to a picnic and we will click more images this is another image which has a stark difference it is largely overexposed it's completely bright so you can see that the entire pixel value tar is situated at the right end of course still nothing is nothing is completely bright nothing is white over here so everything is situated towards the very brighter section except this boatman and some boatman over here who are situated if you look at it towards the left of the histogram so most likely this smaller peak is the backside boatman and this larger my slightly larger peak over here is this big boatman and otherwise you can see that there is no middle value no, no middle gray value everything else is lying over here the background entire background is in the first peak while the image of the bridge which is slightly very slightly darker lies in this part so that is mostly overexposed i hope it brings a very good clarity to you people you can see that we can divide our histograms depending on the image dark light low contrast high contrast looking at the image and looking at the histogram you can guess both the things for example if your histogram is towards the left most of the histograms are plotted from dark to bright and we can summarize the results by saying that if the histogram is concentrated towards the left then it's a predominantly a dark underexposed image if the histogram is mostly concentrated towards right then it is predominantly a bright image if it is concentrated somewhere in the middle nothing towards left nothing towards right then it's a low contrast image and if it's a well spread from complete left side to complete right side then it's a high contrast image so that leads to our next step and that is called as histogram equalization that you will find that for visual perception this is the best image so if you get image in this category or this category or this category once you know the histogram you can convert the histogram to this and that leads to what is called histogram equalization which i will introduce you today and then we will stop but we will see the uses of histogram processing before that as we have discussed it's a very important topic it opens the door for what is called as digital imaging or computational imaging so it is used for image enhancement you can figure out the in fact there is no need of a visual inspection if you know the histogram the camera systems itself can figure out whether the image is a dark image or a bright image depending on whether it's a dark or bright you can calculate you can apply suitable corrections to the image before the user even see the image and that is what the modern days cameras are doing in fact what the present day iphone does what is called an high def high definition or hdr photography 
is the same thing it captures the image uh, an underexposed and overexposed image calculates their histogram then uses the histogram to merge into each other to create an image with a high dynamic range image statistics can be calculated how much is a bright region how much is a dark region for example suppose if you want to calculate from a satellite picture you want to know how much percent of how much percent of a particular geographical region is covered by forest let's say that that is the question then you can look at the image calculated histogram and from the histogram you can figure out that how much percent would be uh, what is called as a dark how much percent is bright applying a suitable cutoff in the histograms you can find out how much is the forest cover image compression so for example if your image is completely underexposed brighter pixels don't have any value so you can reject those brighter pixels or vice versa if your image is overexposed then your darker pixels don't have any value those bit planes can be discarded and image can be saved in a very small memory data bank so that is image compression image segmentation suppose if i know that if i want to suppose the last image that i showed you the image of a bridge and a person boating boating person i want to segment i want to remove the bridge from the boat then you can see that removing it manually is very challenging but removing it by observation is very challenging for a computer system but removing it by histogram is very easy you saw you saw the histogram it has let's go back you saw the histogram it has two distinct sections one is this one and one is this one i want to keep the boat person and i want to remove the bridge all i can do is i can take the histogram cut this part discard this and retain only this and go back to the image and i will see only the boatman is remaining and the background has been removed so this is what is also called as a background removal although that is a more little more complex than this one so this was the another use image segmentation you divide the image into different parts then the histogram is very simple to calculate it's simple calculation so most of the time right now it is wired into hardware as well as in software so most of the time when you take the image most of the cameras will calculate the histogram of the image even before you press the click button so what cameras will do these days is that they will look at the image apply the look at the histogram apply the correction and then show you the corrected image straight away in the viewfinder or on the screen so it's a very real time image processing tool which is happening it is embedded both in software in and in the hardware and of course as we have seen the appearance of the image you can judge decide correct etc let me introduce histogram equalization we have already seen one of the examples so what we do is we increase the contrast by using equalization please don't get confused between normalization and equalization normalization we have discussed earlier almost all the histograms these days are normalized histograms equalization is different from normalization equalization is nothing but spreading the histogram uniformly from the dark to bright so from a very dark region if it's underexposed entire histogram is skewed to the left you spread the histogram uniformly all throughout and you get a high contrast histogram and that is what is called histogram equalization it also increases the dynamic range as we have discussed you can take a very dark region you can take a very bright region 
stretch it and you will get high dynamic range or from very dark high dynamic range means you start with a very dark pixel value and go to a very bright pixel value then it may increase visual graininess there are sometimes pitfalls as well so for example if your number of pixels are restricted and if you stretch it too much in your histogram scale horizontal scale then there could be some gaps in the middle which may leads to graininess in some cases but here is one example which i am showing you this is a very dark image entire histogram is concentrated to the left then i am looking at a histogram here it is concentrated to the right here it is in the middle but as we have seen if you spread it all all across then it becomes a well spread out histogram very good high contrast image so maybe we can stop here for the day we'll continue talking on histogram and the other things in the next class